Hi, everybody. Welcome to Pace Studio on the Road. We are live at the Winter Wondergrass Festival from the Olympic Valley Stables in lovely Lake Tahoe, California, with Jenny and Jesse of Dead Winter Carpenters. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. It's a pleasure. This is a, a wonderful reunion. It was almost 10 years ago that we went out on the road together, and we've got a, a rich and storied past together. And uh, <laughs> it's really cool to be uh, crossing paths in this context. And uh, we all get to do what we do well, and we can't wait to share your music with the internet, man. There's uh, four songs coming up. Two of them are from the current EP, uh, Sinners and Freaks. What do you feel like doing first today? Uh, we're going to play one called If I Wrote You a Song. has your, um, I should preface this, we very much appreciate you singing on a Sunday at 1 p.m. in the <laughs> afternoon. Um, I know you've had a big week. We've had a big, big week as well. Um, and it felt like on, um, there's a sign on the highway burning. It felt like you both dug in vocally, and I appreciate that digging <laughs> at 1 p.m. on a Sunday. Um, how are you feeling vocally, musically, artistically after uh, the Winter Wondergrass weekend? 
Oh man, it's been an emotional experience, mm -hmm. you know, coming back from a couple years of being off and just getting to see everybody and talking our faces off to everybody. It was mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> we had a good time. <laughs> yeah, we, we did decide to do the, the highest keyed song of, of the day first. <laughs> first. <laughs> That's how we warm up. Now yeah. we're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> feeling good overall. Yeah. yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. <laughs> it's been great to see some friends, so many friends, man, friend after friend. It's, it's been beautiful. It feels, it feels good, for sure. Yeah, because this is, this is the, the hiatus year, right? They book artists one year, not the next year, one year, not the next year. And you yeah. guys played 2019, and now right. somehow 2022 is 2020. Yeah, so and we just got a call uh, uh, from Scotty Stoughton, you know, the, the producer of Wondergrass, like probably two weeks ago. And he's like, you know, man... The only thing we feel that's missing this year is you guys, you know? So he's like, would you guys want to come up and do this set at the top of the Funatel, which is way up on top of the mountain? And uh, we're like, hell yeah, we want to do that, man. You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, like you said, we've been coming back every other year, and this was our off year, but then it was like three rolled over off years in a row. So yeah. <laughs> it's good to be back in some form and having fun. We had a great set yesterday. It was really fun. So. Good. Yeah. Did yeah. he? Um, we Juan and I were in um, in Boise at the Tree Fort Festival last week when we were setting this up, and Scotty called us, and we had a, a lengthy conversation about you. He's like, "Dude, local heroes, got to have those guys on." I was like, right "Yes, on. of course you've got to have those guys." <laughs> totally. Yeah. Here we are. Um, what do you feel like playing second today? Uh, so today's a very special day uh, for me. It's it's uh, my mom's birthday today, and uh, she she passed. Uh, in the fall of 2019, so right before the pandemic and the whole, the precipice of this whole EP that we wrote was based on her passing. And um, this next song we're gonna we're gonna play is called Cornerstone. Cornerstone. I don't know how I just pronounced that wrong, but <laughs> um, I heard it right. <laughs> and I started working on this song, uh, you know, before she left us, and so she got to hear this in its first iteration, which was cool. It was more like a bluegrassy, up tempo, like, hey. Stuff's not great right now, but there's stuff to feel good about, too, you know? And so she was digging this, and uh, she's like, oh, you hadn't written a song about me before. I'm like, I don't know. There's probably more about you and more of these songs than you actually know, you know? Mm -hmm. But this one was directly for her. And um, she came to visit the summer before she passed, and we got to play it for her, and it was, you know, super emotional, and it, and it, and it was great. But so going in to record this EP, Sinners and Freaks, we kind of used this as, as the cornerstone of the record. And we used uh, this song uh, to raise money for the OCRA, which is the Ovarian Cancer Research Alliance. And um, we released this song on her birthday two years ago at the beginning of the pandemic. This was the second single off the record. And uh, we raised $2,200 for the OCRA, which was, was amazing for us. And so... I would like to say, if, if, you, if you are looking to donate some money, to, it's a great cause, and, and you could donate something in her name if you wanted to still, and um, her name's Donna Dunn, and this song's for her. It's called Cornerstone, so. How's it go? Main Street at the old Red Dog Saloon Way back in the spring of 74 They spent late nights cruising back roads in his Pontiac GTO Little did he know she'd be his cornerstone The first was more Snowstorm on a brisk October day Way back in the fall of 79 The second one came in the summertime of 1981 Little did they know she'd be their cornerstone
shining in the light of a harvest moon Wrapped up tight in the arms of her groom Her light will never fade, this I know When it's time for her to fly way back Thank you very much for sharing the story behind it and the music Absolutely. as well. Um, it's a, a family day. Your delightful daughter is here off camera right now, who uh, who Donna got to meet before she did, before yeah. she passed. One yep. of those grandbabies you sang about. Um, yep. I know that. Uh, I mean kids and family and this community here in Tahoe is uh, is a tight-knit community. You are very much a part of it in terms of just contributing culturally, musically, and educationally also. I know there's there's music music teaching that goes on as well. Can we talk a little bit about some of the, uh, the education that you do to um, make sure that kids in Tahoe grow up awesome and knowing what music is? Yeah, the, the kids in Tahoe are awesome, period. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Regardless, and I have the great pleasure of getting to um, guide them in their musical journey when they come to me and I teach fiddle lessons, I teach guitar lessons, mandolin lessons, some voice lessons and I've been teaching in the schools around here more recently as well obviously um, since we're not on the road so much because of our beautiful daughter and because of the pandemic I kind of took up some elementary teaching school jobs as well too so it's been fun teaching the kids music it's always a great time. Yep. She's a fantastic teacher. She won't <laughs> say it, but they just love her. I mean, the <laughs> feedback is absolutely incredible. And you see the, the growth of these kids. And she has uh, performances and recitals kind of at the end of each quarter. And you see these kids. It's just, it's, it's amazing. It really is. What the, what's the youngest kid that performed at oh, yeah, Moe's there? Four, I had a four-year-old um, perform at Moe's. Yeah, we, did, we do some performances every once in a while. You'd be Mo's blown away. <laughs> uh, he just got up in there and just shredded, <laughs> singing. It was this. There's nothing but soul, man. It's yeah. so cool. From four to sixteen, where the um, that night, which is about a month ago, we had a big performance, and my sixteen-year-old, I was like, "Do a whole set with me," you know. And she's just great, and I've been teaching her since she was five, so it's been it's been really fun to watch them grow and learn, and they're just, you know. I'm just like I said, just their guide. They're they're amazing kids. Yeah, that's but, that was the thing that I was going to ask next. Like, have any of those students then sort of transcended the student teacher relationship and then kind of become peers to a certain extent? And it sounds like that's exactly what happened with that. Yeah, that exactly. 16 year old. Yeah, that's she's awesome. great. She's she's better than me though, so she doesn't need me anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, well, thank you again for doing this. Um, we appreciate your music and your time very much. And uh, there, we're halfway through. There's still two more songs coming up. What do you feel like doing third today? We're gonna do a, a song that actually you made a video of. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <I did. laughs> coincidentally, it's called "Time Off the Bottle." Yeah, we got to give Brad a shout. He's he's <laughs> done some 
excellent work for us. We've had some great times on the road, and and uh, we we just really appreciate you. Thank you, guys. So, and Juan so much as well. fun, and so, yeah. we just serendipitously ended up here today with you again, which is amazing. <laughs> Always our favorite to see you. <laughs> yeah, so this one, Time Off the Bottle, we, we wrote and uh, released, obviously, towards the beginning of the pandemic, too, and I feel like it was not only us that may have been drinking more than usual and, you know, <laughs> going to the corner store and being like, what the hell is going on in this world, man? You know, so it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of a juxtaposition, this song, Time Off the Bottle, a bit, but you'll get the sentiment, I'm sure. Thank you. That's, uh, I mean, I, I've listened to that song so many times in the editing process, I can't help but see the, see the images that go along with <laughs> it. And that was, man, it was a total pleasure to gather all, it was all found, or contributed footage, because this, when did we do it? It was like April or May of 2020? Yep. I mean, like full on lockdown. And so getting those submissions from your family, from your grandma and grandpa, from, yeah. you know, everybody related to the Dead Winter Carpenters family, even though I didn't see any of those people in reality, it still felt like we were connecting a little bit. And Charles Mallet's in it, Virgil and June, man. Yeah. I've told the stories about bailing hay with Virgil, and <laughs> <laughs> picking blackberries in a thunderstorm, man. That was oh, yeah. amazing. So it was really cool to reconnect with Darren Nay. Like there's so so that was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. That Darren was Nay with the tequila, the only one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the one bit of special effects in that video. I was like, dude, this is so different than what I asked you for, but it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's <so good. laughs> um, awesome. I know you guys do you have a number of upcoming shows. There's the um, Homecoming, what do you title? What's the Crystal Bay show called um, on April 30th? 
We well historically we've done it. We've called it uh, Winter's Dead right, weekend, right, right. Um, where we'd play two nights, usually on Memorial Day weekend. Um, but we hadn't done it, obviously, the last couple of years. So we're just doing one night on April 30th, Saturday night, and uh, just going to blow it out. I mean, maybe we could call it Winter's Dead again, but who knows? It was always cool because it was the end of the, end of the spring or the, the winter into the summertime. You never know what the weather's going to be like here. But um, We yeah, lucked so. out this week, man. This is gorgeous. Unbelievable. Dude, we were at, we were at Winter Wondergrass Steamboat, and there were a couple of days when it didn't make it above zero. It was like <laughs> Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'll take T-shirt weather. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's a couple others, too. I know you're going to be at, in San Francisco at the Independent on June 2nd. And then before that, you're playing a couple of shows in Mammoth at the, uh, at the T-Bar Social. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or any of, I mean, the CBC is like the, that's the homecoming show, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be our first home, inside home show, pretty much. We've this. just had so many wonderful nights there and crazy nights filled with all the shenanigans. Yeah, that turn imagine. into mornings and then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Uh huh. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go revisit those uh, ghosts of winter's dead past, and uh, I'm sure we're gonna have fun. So we're looking forward to that. Yeah, for sure. It's a little different when we do the duo. Like if people see us play the duo, you're like, oh, they're mellow, singer songwriting type, and then you see the whole band, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, party time. That's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nice. Well, thank you again for doing this music. As in, I'm enjoying the duo arrangement very much. Um, have a wonderful show at the Crystal Bay on April 30th, and we still got. There's one more song coming up in this session right now. What do you yeah. want to play forth today? Uh, we're gonna. This is probably one of the first, if not the first song that we wrote together. Uh, it's a it's a duet called "Find Your Home." And I grew up on the East Coast in Vermont, and she grew up out here in California. And it's kind of about that merging of paths, you know. I think. <laughs> <laughs>
Wow. <laughs> Man, you've got you've got this been one of the biggest draws of the weekend. I have not looked behind me for quite some time. It's good for you, audience, man. I'm glad that we're here Thanks, all everybody. sharing this together. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah. Enjoy Crystal Bay very much on uh, on April 30th. Enjoy the rest of your winter Wondergrass weekend, and uh, we'll just keep crossing paths forever. I'll see you guys in. I'm back in Tahoe in September, actually. So I'll see you in September, Perfect. if not before. Awesome. Yep. Can't wait. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank we'll you guys see, very uh, much. see you. See you next time. <laughs>